do you approach this field? I mean, the answer will be yes, but let's get more into it. Do you approach this field a lot differently to a main event, for example? It's when you play in this field, you're playing with a known quantity. You, you know the players, you know their tendencies, you know they're not going to do anything ridiculous. So it's kind of like it helps you uh, corral their activities. Whereas when you play in a large field event with a lot of unknowns, a lot of players who are amateur players, they could do anything. Like we saw Dwaglin do in the main event. You know, like this, this event, there's more pressure because the, the level of thinking is higher. But at the same time, uh, how do I say? I don't want to say, use the word easier, but I want to say the word... I want to use the word more predictable, perhaps. Like, I know that he's going to make a move that makes sense. And they seem so relaxed, too. Look at this. Well, we have Jason Moe raising with Queen Jack offsuit. Richard John calls and flops a full house. And it looks as though Jason's going to bet into him with what he thinks is a straight draw that might be live. We haven't spoken about Jason. Jason's a young gun of an online player. He has built up a very impressive record online and he's very feared. Right, he Although, bets 65,000 and gets a call from Richard Yong. And look at <laughs> this, the turn, as though it was scripted, a nine of spades. So that will cost Jason Moe, I'd imagine, quite a bit. The poker gods are so cruel, aren't they? <laughs> they sure are. Well, the pot now almost 300,000. Jason Moe with 1.2 behind him. Turns a straight. Little does he know Richard Yong is sitting on a full house. And he's pretty much flopped him dead. There is no chance that Jason will win this hand. He has bet 145,000. Will Richard Yong elect to call? Or will he pull the trigger now? Richard Yong, the dealer, tells him there's 20 seconds left on the clock. Each player has 30 seconds. Jason bets out 145,000. Richard Young. Richard Young making a big bet of over 350000 now, trying to get the rest of Jason Moe's money, given that Jason has such a strong hand. Is this the time, Joe? Is this where he sticks it in? Would he be wrong to? No, he wouldn't be wrong to. Look, you know, I've said it time and time again. It's hard enough to make a pair, let alone a straight, let alone a full house. So it's sometimes you just get cold decked. This is a cold deck. Jason calls. He's announced call, so we will see a river. And the river is an eight of hearts and gives well, Richard Young quads and he announces all in. So, un Unfortunately, Paul, though, that is the worst card in the deck for Richard. Because now Jason beats nothing now. It's an easy fold for him at this point. We've noticed the dealer in the background calling 20 seconds. This tournament is played. Everyone only gets 30 seconds to act on their hand. And you see the blue buttons in front of every player? That's extended time. So you get like another minute, seconds. a minute and a half if you want to think about your hand. And the reason we've done this is so that people do not think for too long and waste time. Is it possible that the lucky eight on the river for Richard Jong giving him quads could be a saviour. And it is, Joe, you're right. It saved Jason Moe. He would likely have called had that river been anything else. He won a big pot. This time, three of a kind is going to come on board. And he's destined to lose a lot of chips right here. In nine-handed action, Gomez trapped Kevin Saul with sixes full of aces for a huge pot. Now he's got jacks full of aces, but this time it's not the best hand. Well, no, he's really just completely dead here. And now the question is, how is Spindler going to play it? Point, I want to make sure. 1.3. He well, is raising, wasting no time. You know, this is an interesting play here from Spindler. He's got four of a kind, and, you know, popular wisdom would say you should just call and slow play it. But what he's hoping for here is that his raise looks like a bluff and that Gomez does have a hand like aces, kings, or something along those lines and is going to, you know, play for it all. Hey, cool. He's just going to call. Now, you know, the funny thing about this is Gomez actually thinks he's trapping him. Right. He's, he thinks he's slow playing his hand. He's here. doing, he's trying to trap him as he thought he, tra and as he did against Kevin Saul earlier in this tournament. Now, Benny Spindler asking for a chip count. $350,000 a piece. Six. Let's see the turn card. Now, like Benny can't man. really care how much Gomez has. It's, it's just trying to, like, jack, jack, show jack, weakness, if you will. It's a little bit of a sort of Hollywood first. move. Gomez he's is checking. Jacks. 
And that's poker on a higher level, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Now, Gomez is really checking in the hopes that Spindler, you know, is going to bluff at it. As we know, he's not bluffing. He's got four of a kind. And Spindler is really taking an aggressive approach to this hand to try to get as million. many chips in as possible. A big bet once again of two million. Pot up to five and a half million now. Well, this is the opportunity now for either Gomez to be an absolute genius and make the most remarkable laydown we may have ever seen. Don't bet on that. <laughs> or he might just decide, all right, now's the time. Let's get all those chips in the middle. I'm all in. Oh, and he does. He's moving it all in. I call. call. He's calling. He's got four of a kind. Gomez uh, is yeah. ah, completely dead. River card is totally irrelevant. Spindler wins a monster pot, eliminating Gomez. He's up over 16 million in chips now. Stunned. Look at the crowd. They can't believe it. Pocket Ace is going down in flames. The river now just a formality. Spindler now is going to have a stranglehold on this tournament.